Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you watched my last tutorial where I talked about subword tokenization. This is where I provided a quick introduction to what subword tokenization is and uh, we got a bit carried away, I should say I got a bit carried away when I was talking about subword tokenization and I showed you what I mean by carried away is instead of ending the video there, I took those that, that concept and we actually uh, tokenized a, a document that we loaded and using those tokens we actually trained a GPT-2 model all the way from scratch. The results were not great because we trained it only on a single document and only for a few epochs but at least it provided you with an introduction in terms of how you can train a model from scratch. But usually it's not very wise to train a model from scratch, especially large models, because we do not have such resources to effort to train something from scratch. So how can we build on top of uh, the giants, on top of the work that others actually did? So again, I'm sticking with GPT-2 because again, we don't have resources or we don't have access to GPT-3 or 4 in terms of architecture or pre-trained models. So let's stick with GPT-2, but here the goal is to fine tune GPT-2. I kind of did this in one of my, uh, the video not uh, two videos ago, let me put it that way. Uh, but I wanna summarize it and show you how easy it is to actually train your own documents, to fine tune this, to understand your documents. But more importantly, I also wanna show you the difference between using a entire document or restructuring the document into question and answer type so you get chat-like responses, right? I mean, that's what chat GPT is. So we're not just generating natural language anymore. Well, we are, but not like in a, in a sentence form, but it's almost like a question and answer form. Again, it's a sentence form, but still uh, as an answer to your question. I hope you got the point. And here is a quick example that I put on the screen. So if you take the entire text of this Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and you ask the question, what's the be uh, fish, right? So then what type of response do you get? If you train it comp on the entire document versus a document that's more framed as question and answers. And in fact, you don't have to worry, uh, wonder about it. If you don't care about the rest of my tutorial, I just want to take, this is the take home message, which is you, I have a uh, entire document right here, right? So this document talks about, hey, the Babel fish said the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy quietly is a small yellow and leech like and probably blah, blah, blah. So this is the relevant text. If you ask that question, what is Babelfish? Then if you, this is this is literally the result I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Then if you train it on the entire text, it basically says the fish way, whatever, you know, it, it can use more training, but you can see that the answer is not that relevant. But if I, uh, if you train it on a document that has questions and answers, right? So for example, who are the main characters in the book? The main characters are blah, blah, blah. So you train a whole bunch of uh, I mean, you train your language model on a whole bunch of question and answers, then it learns to understand the question and how to phrase the answer. And if you ask the same question, what's the Babel fish? Then it's gonna say, it is a small yellow leech-like creature that can be inserted into a person's ear to instantly translate any language into the user's native tongue. If you don't know, if you haven't read the book, but you have to believe that this is the right answer, yeah? Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the code. And before that, let me just show you the two documents. So you see the difference between these two documents. I mean, you see that on the screen. I just want to show you the text files. Okay, so let's jump in. So here on the screen, you see on the left hand side, I have the entire text document. It says, okay, chapter one, chapter two, and so on. So this is a pretty large document. It does take quite a, uh, a lot of time to train on this which is another reason why you should just change this into the theme, like into the key questions and answers. This is where scraping the internet is very useful. Go get the discussions, uh, you know, discussion forums about the book or whatever information you can get out of this book, like get the Cliff Notes version of this book and then train on it so the training is more efficient. So here on the right hand side, you see the question and answers, the, the text who is the ruler of the universe in the book, and it has an answer right there, and so on, right? So now let's go ahead and jump into our collab to understand the code. I have zoomed in a bit uh, it, to make sure it's easy for you to read. So I already have my uh, session started, and my runtime obviously is going to be GPU. And again, use this wisely. If you don't need GPU, do not waste uh, resources. 
So, but in this case, we do need it. So I install the transformers and I install PyPDF because the document I plan on reading is originally was in PDF format. I saved it into text. You'll see that in a second. And uh, I'm also installing docx in case you have word files. So between these, you should be able to read uh, PDF files, word files, and uh, uh, not like .txt files. And uh, okay, the next step was to import our libraries. And the next one, again, I covered this two tutorials ago, but basically a set of functions that allow us to read PDF, allow us to read uh, word and so on. Now, if you get uh, an error, sometimes when you read PDF or Word, it doesn't matter. It depends on special characters. Sometimes it may not recognize those characters. And my suggestion is I, I, prob I do not have answers to any of those. I ran into a couple of those and I just did a quick Google search and found a solution in terms of, oh, you need this UTF-8 encoding or whatever. Just add a line and then it fixes it. So I cannot anticipate the type of issues you will run into, but anticipate some issues around, uh, especially with PDF documents. If they're already in text, uh, usually you don't have much of a uh, issue. Okay, so these are the three functions that we are going to use. In fact, in my case, I only ended up using read PDF since I have single PDF file and uh, read text. Now, uh, I'm going to read documents from a directory. So my directory may have PDF or docx or text. It doesn't matter. You throw hundreds of these documents in a directory. You read all of those and you combine the text into a text uh, document or yeah, if you want to save it uh, locally. Okay, here uh, for everything, the code could have been a bit more efficient so I can test multiple scenarios, but I was just uh, being lazy. So I just commented the first part or the second part and then ran the code and then commented the other and ran the code. Why? Because I wanted to save my data. Like, first of all, there are two different input files that I want to provide, one stored in full text, the other one stored in Q&A. I just showed you the text. So that's why I was sw swapping between these two. But now that I know the code works, maybe the next step is just combine everything into a function where you provide the input uh, and your where your input data is and where and all the other stuff, you know, as part of arguments. That's but you know how to do that. So that's what I'm doing right there. And uh, if you want, you can save uh, you can split the data. Uh, did I do that? No, I. you can't split your data into train and uh, validation, and then you can go ahead and save them locally. I did that two videos ago. So again, you can get the code from there. Uh, so after reading the text, I have a bunch of text. Now what do I do? Now I'm writing that text into local directory uh, into, into a file called train.txt. Yeah, so basically I took my uh, PDF and I saved it as train.txt. You don't have to do that, but yeah, I just I just wanted to use that for future uh, training. So I just went ahead and did that. Okay, now comes the actual meaty part. I mean, this is literally 20 lines of code for the entire thing. I mean, if you just look at the key part parts of it. So this is that easy because others did the work already and allowed us to use their work via transformers library in this example. Yeah, so we are going to use GPT-2 tokenizer and we are going to, the primary model is going to be GPT-2 LM head model. That's the model we are going to use right now. I mean, that's what we are going to use to read the model. And uh, we are going to read the data set for which we need to provide the file path and what tokenizer we are going to use and what the block size is, yeah? And uh, load data collator again. You don't. This is not a necessity, I believe, but uh, I I tend to use this uh, data collator quite a bit. Uh, well, not that I do language processing every day, but whenever I use, uh, this is this is uh, something that I provide as part of my uh, training. If you see, uh, if I can find it somewhere, yeah, right there, data collator, as part of my uh, training, right there, yeah. Uh, Okay, and uh, I briefly explained what it is in my uh, past tutorial, but again, you can go ahead and uh, read online what exactly that does. And then we create a function for the training process, which again, you need to provide your training file path and uh, model name and all the, all the stuff that you, you know. And we are uh, defining a tokenizer, as you know, we need to, I mean, if you watch my last tutorial, you know what a tokenizer is, and we are using GPT-2 tokenizer right there. I believe it's, again, byte pair encoding based tokenizer. But again, if you just want to use this to fine tune your model, you don't need to know anything, which is very scary. Now anyone can take this, customize it for their specific use. 
good or bad. <laughs> yeah, fake news, good news, it doesn't matter. You can customize it easily without knowing anything. Okay, so uh, we are going to use the tokenizer right there and we know what the training uh, data set is. I mean, we defined our load data set right there. So that's exactly what we are calling down here. We're calling the data collator and then we are uh, uh, tokenizer, save the pre-train. Where do you want to save that tokenizer? And now we are defining the model. Our model is again, we are using GPT-2 LM head model from pre-trained and whatever the model name is. Our model name in this case is going to be GPT-2, I believe. That's what we are using. Uh, they have different variations, GPT-2, small, medium, large, extra large, and so on. So you can use whatever you will, you're curious about. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then we define train arguments like, uh, like we have done in the past, where to save, output directory, and so on, number of epochs, how many epochs you wanna train it on. And once you define your training arguments, you're going to use that as part of your trainer. And within the trainer itself, of course, you need to define your model, you need to define your training arguments, which we have done uh, up here, and uh, data collator, again, optional, I guess, uh, and training data set, what is your training data set? In this case, we are not dividing our data into train and test. I'm using the entire data as training data, but you can uh, separate them. Again, watch my last, the two videos ago. Okay, so that is the function. Now it's time to call that function, that's it. So to do that, we are defining what the training uh, file path is. So in this example, I show Q and A, train.txt, because that's the last one I just did a few minutes ago. And model name is GPT-2, we already talked about it. And where do I want to save my train model? In the models directory right there, and number of epochs, I trained them for 50 epochs each, both of these models. Okay, and usually I don't change much of other, uh, uh, anything else. You can try this batch size, what effect it has in terms of the uh, predictions, but uh, number of epochs, obviously you know what it is. Uh, train, now we are just training it, right? So we're just calling this function by providing everything that it is looking for. There you go. So I did the training and now let's go ahead and do the inference, which means uh, predicting it or generating the text. Uh, by the way, if you think I'm going too fast, yeah, I'm going too fast. There's not much to talk about here. You can literally take this code and uh, change your documents, put your documents in, train it and get decent results. That's exactly what it is. And there is not much to explain here, basically. And if you're really curious about, oh, this guy didn't talk about data collator. Yeah, go ahead and research more about it. Yeah, that's that's something that you can easily research yourself. So I'm just showing you how easy it is to structure uh, or to train it on your own data. And let's look at the results. That part I'm going to do live. So inference, so let's actually, how do, I mean, this could have been in a different file. Uh, once you have the trained model, now it's part of, uh, it's basically using it. We are doing pretty much uh, uh, similar approach by defining a bunch of uh, uh, functions. One, to load the model, yeah. We saved it at this model path and we are loading the tokenizer and we are generating the text, basically using the loaded model and uh, sequence length, for example, and uh, what is the maximum length and so on. So based on this, let's run these functions and now we just need to call the function. So we'll do two things. One is, uh, I call this model one path and model two path. Model one is our full text path. Model two is the custom Q&A, the, the only trained on Q&A part. So let's generate uh, sequence length 50 is okay. And I'm asking exactly the same question. What is the mm, uh, Babel fish? So let's do that and let's do this and let's see what the answers uh, are going to be. And I promise that this is going to be a short video. Well, 15 minutes for me is short. Uh, it says I'm not utilizing GPU. Hopefully, um, I think for prediction it should. Let's go ahead and close it. Okay, model one. What is the Babel fish? They've never heard of it. They make fish. They've gone back into space. Obviously, it's giving me a response that's related to the book that I just used to fine tune it. But this is not, this is not there. Maybe, um, I don't know, 50 more epochs. So that's one thing we need to try. But again, in this case, the text is not presented as questions and answers. In this case, the text was presented as questions and answers. And here, what is the Babel fish? It is a small yellow leech-like creature that can be inserted into person's ear to blah, blah, blah. And that is exactly the right answer. Okay, guys, I hope you found this uh, tutorial to be useful and again, uh, please subscribe and uh, hit the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Let's meet again in the next tutorial.